live somewhere. Those <laughs> of uh, 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 you who didn't raise your hand, I knew you were lying. Um, so this actually matters to you. Uh, we are an online platform and data company along with a marketplace that enables smart real estate development and land use decisions. This is going to impact the places where we live, work, and play. So it's going to affect everyone in here. What we're doing is we're coordinating the various stakeholders that are involved in redevelopment process, especially in urban areas. That's the public sector, governments, and uh, quasi-public authorities that are involved in development, along with private sector investors, developers, capital partners, actual operating partners who are doing the uh, construction, and the public who wants to observe what's happening in their neighborhoods. So again, this is what we look like. Kind of like Zillow or CoStar, but we're focusing on development activity, which is totally different. Zillow and CoStar help you now find office space or residential space that has existed. We help you track and understand undeveloped land, undeveloped projects within cities or in the suburbs, and eventually we'll be expanding to our rural areas as well. This is what we're doing. We're taking the messy, fragmented data that governments and, and public entities use right now to track development information. So we're taking tax assessor records, zoning, master planning, which lives in all different data silos and different agencies and places. We're aggregating them to inform the various stakeholders about the direction of development activity by the way of data analytics, visualizations, and insights, which will spur action on various sites. So let me talk to you about the problem that we're addressing. This is what the problem is. It's a piece of vacant property that sits in the middle of a city that you and I drive and walk by all the time and wonder what is happening. This is actually in Miami, Florida. This is a public asset. It's firehouse number nine. It's hard to believe that this is in the United States. Um, it's been, been like that. Trash is collecting around it. Um, it really doesn't seem to have any use, and it tends to break a neighborhood. So we're wondering how we take assets that look like this and use information to help them become things like this. This is right down the street. In the same neighborhood, it's in the Windwood District, which was a warehouse district in the middle of the city. And essentially, a developer bought up a, a bunch of contiguous parcels, which are all adjacent to each other, invested essentially in lighting, and he commissioned the world's best street artists to do an outdoor street art gallery that covers a couple of the city blocks. This was a catalytic investment for Windwood and downtown Miami. So it wasn't just a good social investment in terms of having people being willing to come back, congregate around it, a reduction in policing costs and maintenance for the city. It actually also resulted in multipliers economic. So the commercial rents went up in the area about $10 per square foot in three years, which is unheard of. But the problem is a lot of these assets are invisible to us. So that's what our platform does, we make them visible. So again, we're taking the data that looks like this and we're turning it into beautiful visualizations and representations like this. This is actually a map of all the government-owned property in Louisville, Kentucky. When we showed the city this map, they had no idea how much property they held. It's about 10,000 pieces of property. It covers about 20 to 30 percent of the land area in the city. And they had no idea they were losing money on it, holding it, carrying it. It was shocking to them. This is zoning information. Usually zoning is not in English. It's in C1, C2, M5, O, or 3. None of us can understand it. We're translating zoning codes to English. What you're allowed to build in certain areas so you can understand what investments are permissible. And this is a hot spotting map of uh, incentive programs. So you can actually track real estate development activity using public information. And you can predict where property values are going to increase based on these types of public investments. This is a property profile. Again, looks, feels kind of like Zillow. Um, this is an empty armory building that's been sitting for seven years and costs.
costing the uh, Louisville uh, $200,000 a year just to mothball. <coughs> and this was totally offline. So we're making this visible, prominent. We're sending it and circulating it to developers and investors now. We're, we want to accelerate urban redevelopment. This is our architecture. So we take existing data in various forms, and we have an, uh, an intake process that's proprietary. We use uh, APIs, loaders, and back-end content management systems. And we use a, a model view controller. This is essentially our architecture. Uh, our technical co-founder can talk to you about that. And this is where we are now. Uh, six cities, Penning in Miami, Florida, San Antonio, Texas, uh, we're coming to Boston very soon. Um, and I guess my ask for the audience is we're looking for tech talent to join our team. We're closing our round right now, about half a million in a, a convertible note angel financing. Um, there's a little bit of room left. <coughs> and uh, <laughs> let's go rebuild some cities. Thank you. Have we partnered up with any commercial real estate firms? We are talking to two very big ones right now. Uh, so we're looking at potential revenue sharing agreements for transactions on properties. We'd prefer to do that instead of our current model where we're selling uh, technology services to governments uh, to display and, and clean their data, uh, as well as making money on, uh, on the private developer side with premium information products. That's our purpose. We want to move to the transaction and pay for success at this time. Yes? So how, how did you get into this space and what kind of product you were going to take this? Yeah, our co-founders all have you know, very personal stories about places we were walking by and understanding why certain neighborhoods are broken. Um, essentially, you know, what we found in talking to many people is that you know, these places become forgotten. They, uh, you walk by something so many times and there's no activity going on there, you just kind of walk by it and breeze by it. Until, you know, the rents in the area go up, density goes up, uh, and some developer grabs it and decides to, you know, put up an 11-story luxury condo. But we want to make the diversity of the outcomes greater. So we need more affordable housing, medium income housing. We need more place-making projects in cities, open space, blue and green infrastructure, stormwater waste management. Um, personally, I drove by that neighborhood in Miami when I lived there for a few years, uh, the warehouse district, every day on my commute to work. And I was commuting from the beach to downtown Miami, and I didn't understand why a huge section of the city was entirely disinvested. I mean, it was almost like someone drew a line and said, we're not going to put any money here. And I, 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 I was totally incredulous about it, frustrated. <laughs> so that's what got me into this. Yes? Yeah. Yeah, Correctly, you mentioned capturing two cities here. How difficult is the cell process to capture the interest of the <coughs> various municipalities? And how complicated it is it to manage the stock of the stakeholders? Oh, it sucks. <laughs> it totally sucks. But it's worth it. Um, you know, we're, we're, as our product gets better, uh, better, excuse me, um, our uh, sales cycle is getting a little bit faster. When cities come online and we actually gain a critical mass and we can point to some success cases, they don't want to be left behind. Right? So, so, so they're opening up their, their database. The data is actually the easy part. The hard part is getting a champion within the city to actually use the database and respond to phone calls when people want to develop a product, or when they have alternative uses for product. But we're working on it. Um, the other thing I'll say about the, the sales process and the uptake is that on the private side, real estate developers and investors still work with paper. So data analytics on you know, evaluation techniques and where development is happening is entirely new to them. So it's not just the government side that's tough. I mean, people are surprised when they hear that. <laughs> Luckily though, things like CoStar, things like Zillow, are leading the way on you know, organizing information and bringing the real estate industry to the digital industry. Other questions? Yes? How are you incentivizing 
How are we incentivizing development we can be proud of? So, um, we don't do that. We don't prescribe the development outcomes. The public has to do that, and the cities where we, where we are working need to have a plan of action, a real estate management strategy, a development strategy. We're not locals. Real estate is still a very local game in, all the, in many of the markets where we're working. So, uh, all we're doing is giving them an image of their development strategy back to them so that they can see where the deficiencies are, where they need to create better incentive programs for the right development, more green space, more housing. Maybe in some cases it is more luxury hotels and, and condos. I mean, that for the right type of market, that works. So we are not prescribing the outcomes. We are an objective company. Yes? Uh, will you be able to assist the uh, Boston Redevelopment Authority in their uh, efforts? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, so I, I can't say anything disparagingly right now because we have a meeting coming up with the BRA. Um, but I think the BRA is actually taking you know a forward-leaning process on data. If you look at their new website, it's pretty extraordinary. Um, you got to give them a lot of credit for new transparency, uh, and, and we just want to work off that momentum. I think we're out of time. Do we have time for one more? One more. Okay. Um, can you distinguish between different property types with your like, geo mapping, or is it just kind of this is property or this is the map? This is like... No, we have uh, we actually have a, a pretty rigorous method for distinguishing between land building structure and then the end use of the property. So, um, if it's a parking authority that holds the property, we know that we can usually discern that it's a parking. We display that. The end users also are. are uh, content managers on the back end, the government service providers usually tag their properties appropriately with some descriptions. Entertainment venue, institution, etc. Thank you. Come join New England's largest technology meetup. Sponsor an event, present, or attend. Visit www.bostonnewtech.org.